why did you call it North? Because it's a label and a, and, a, and a music superficial label. It's very London, isn't it? It's, it's come out of, mm. it, it, you know, it's, it's, people talk about it as being the sound of London. By calling it North, it's almost like you're sort of, you know, again, you're sending out another signal in a way. Definitely. So, yeah, a lot of people definitely. have seen it that way as well. Where yeah. do they come from as well? Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's nice to kind of fly the flag of the North, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And there's some, it kind of harks back to some stuff that we've listened to in our lives, like Joy Division. It's kind of like, you know, Kind of echoes of that sort of scene, and you know those kind of acts, not human league, mm. those northern clunky weird bands that mm. come out of the eighties and stuff. Mm. Mm. But there's a, there's a lot of things about you that are quite abstract, like the idea that you, you know to some extent you're a northern band, but you're not of, of that north. You're you you're a mixture of sort of norths as mm. well. Mm. Yeah. And that's that's kind of interesting as well, and it it goes for the music as well. And it's sort of falling between a lot of gaps. It's 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 tentative in a way, which I think is also interesting. You know. Mm. It's sort of, uh, it, it's almost sort of pulling back from beats as well. Yeah, there's a lot of space in there. And, and, and why was that? Why was that decision? We were make, we were listening to a lot of film scores and getting. More, I personally was finding it quite restrictive putting a rhythm section on tracks, when the chords or something, and it started to it started to annoy me that I, I, I was expected to do that or or. That's what we've been yeah, kind of used just, to doing or whatever. So we just like started writing sequences of music and and you know filling them out with lyrics and stuff like that. So it was. They all a lot of the songs started that way as well. Just literally chords, vocals, maybe a string or yeah, something yeah. like that. So mm. there's no beat on the first ones, and then we just filled it out rather than with more like textures and like. Um, even when we did use a beat, like trying to find a quirky sound or something like that, a lot of like the Talking Heads percussion and stuff like that, we listened to quite a lot of. Mm. Yeah. And uh, that remaining light and mm -hmm. songs like uh, Listening Wind. So we were kind of really into that kind of thing for a while. Mm. So I suppose we didn't want to fill it out with big chunky beats straight away mm. and we avoided it on a lot of things. It's like, mm. it's more scattered. Mm. Do you think it's connected to some of the earlier kind of things that were being done in dubstep that were the more stranger, darker, yeah, that's, futuristic that's, things. Yeah, totally like that I think that back back like in two thousand and four, two thousand and three with people like horsepower and like earlier scream stuff and then obviously burial and and code nine it I think that was a very uh healthy crop of talent that came mm -hmm. through together, do you know what I mean? So I think that that's our sound, even though there is a lot of vocals and people are saying like it's a little bit Indish or whatever, it, it, which I don't agree with. Right. Um, I think it, a lot of it, a lot of the influence harks back to that type of period. Mm. And what drew you to that kind of uh, playing with sound at the time, when there was a lot of oh, very right. quick, quick-witted experimentation going on? My housemate took me down to Plastic People, uh, and it was like it was it was it was really early on. Uh, when forward was going in, yeah, it was it was it was really surprising in a good way to see that like on on that like big big crystal clear system those type of sonics. It was quite because you know I'd, I'd literally moved down and up north at that point there was a huge type of drum and bass scene, mm. so to go down to plastic people in here like that amount of space. And but still that kind of sub and those sounds, it, it was really refreshing. And I think the like the spaciousness on the album definitely is influenced by that mm. that period. Like I'd, I'd been making beats, but that how in depth people went on production, that, that kind of like made made me up what I was doing. Yeah, you've been talking about like playing live, and you were you were having a little bit of anxiety. And is that <laughs> because you're worried about it just looking ordinary? Are you worried about it like, kind of not? You know, because there's just the three of you, how are you going to do it? Is it just going to disappear or is it, is it a wider concern? The sound, first and foremost, mm. if, if, if we can translate that to a good enough standard and then... Mm. Um, then the look, like how all three of us are going to look on stage and how we're going to act and perform. And, yeah. then, <laughs> and, then, um, and then just the reaction, I suppose. So that, that was my... First three fears. Yeah, you got more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then obviously, like you've got engineering and stuff like that. So there's loads of stuff that you have to keep on the ball with. But 
I suppose you can only just like rehearse and make it as tight as possible and do your bit, but it's it's, it's definitely it's weird. It's good fun though, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really good fun. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. we played in Lowlands like a couple of weeks ago, our, our second gig, and that it was really good fun. The first it. show was really exciting. It was too, <laughs> we played to like a big garden in Denmark. Yeah. yeah. Rounds of applause in between, very polite. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. <laughs> just what you are. Just what we see. needed, man. Yeah. But uh, it's mostly like if, if we can translate the sound mm. well, I think that's the starting point, and then we're going to expand and move on to like styling and performance and everything. But as long as oh, we can, as long as we can capture the listener and everything with the yeah. with the sonics and the sound yeah. first of all. That's all kind of, the, that's the most important thing for now. What's interesting about this kind of music, I've always thought, is that actually it's like shape-shifting and it, it, it constantly resists, you know, being too fixed down and as soon as a word comes along <coughs> that fixes it, 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 it sort of starts to decay. Well, that's the really weird thing is that when you start putting a label on something, like you say, like, it's like a, just like a dubstep label putting out dubstep tunes and it, where, where can it go from that point? Musically speaking, this could go anywhere, really, dark star. And a lot of artists, I think, should think like that as well. Mm. It's not just you know you're not just on, on one track to to do one thing. Anything could happen. Like the Beatles are an amazing example for that. I always think because they just wrote loads of music and just created and they had their own sound, they had the voices and the tones, but mm. everything was kind of different. And one tune would be like whatever, like this or that, you know. So that's really exciting. I think I don't want to speak on behalf of everybody, but that's something that really excites me. Is just like. <laughs> no, do you agree? I do agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like be creative, really. Yeah. And don't worry about too much about what mm. people say. It's just. I think you could just be a single, a twelve-inch single artist, and mm. then you could do well off it, and it, mm. I think it'd be quite satisfying as well. But then at the same time, if you do that, then I suppose you're sacrificing an LP. Mm. Yeah. yeah. We had quite a lot of tunes similar to that, similar to the ones we'd done as twelves. Mm. And that would have been a, like just a continuation of those kind of tracks. And once we've done a particular type of tune, we we like to move on and keep it, you know, mm. interesting. Mm. So yeah, more t in the direction of towards an LP. That's where mm. yeah, we, I think we always had our we always had an ambition to do an LP mm. and be an act rather than yeah. just and play live and, and stuff and like that. So how do you begin to work out what that act's going to be? Because once upon a time it was kind of, you know, back in those days you were talking about the Beatles and everything, it kind of took care of itself, mm. what an act was. And now, I guess, if you want to be a, a fairly original act as well, it's kind of difficult to work out how to do that without just, you know, falling mm. into the crowd, if you like. It's just the best policy. I think it's like trying to do what you feel if you've got a good idea. I mean, you can talk about something visually, how something mm. looks and the way you dress it up mm. and the concept behind the whole thing. Yeah. But I think just behind it is essentially two or three guys making yeah. music and doing it like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's true though, it's like, it's definitely changed the way you, you kind of, you're pushed by a label or mm. you, you get your music distributed to the world now. It's, uh, I think it's all blurred mm. to a point where I think if you had good enough material, you, you mm. Well, that's the thing, that's uh, the bottom line. Mm. Material's got to be... Because we're on a small label, it's it, it's it's still really it's kind of on a shoestring. Do you know what I mean? Mm. The whole thing. Mm. So it although we are on a label, it's still sometimes it's just we finish tunes and give them mm. to Steve, and then we know the process so well of hyper that I don't know I don't know what it, I don't know how other people work or. Like how they launch their music or get it out there, and you trust that 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 way, that kind of retreat, if you like, that withdrawal can still, they'll still, you'll still find an audience. An audience will come to you. Or do you think they're used to everybody sort of, you know, jumping up down and and and, and you know, bands jumping in front of them and getting attention? You've mm. you've sort of gone the other way. Well, people are savvy, right? People find it's so easy to come across music these days. I don't think you need to necessarily ram it down people's throats. In fact, I get really like irritated when mm. I read certain magazines. And it's like this. Album will change your life. You know, yeah, the Messiah has returned. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's always a little bit more mm. interesting when someone passes you, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When yeah. It's yeah. recommended yeah. from mouth to mouth. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Where the mouth. Yeah, and, and and in a sense, it is a kind of longing for something that once was, I guess, 
you know, a, a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about those bands in the Human League and everything. There was a lot of word of mouth in that, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was about imagining the future. Do you still feel that your music, you know, imagines the future and it's got that, that side of dubstep, which was also interesting, that futuristic side? After 80s Girl and then moving on to, like, not a theme but a title like North, it, mm. it kind of puts it, like, puts a halt on it a little bit. Because mm. it's but progressive. You don't really right? think of mm. North and the future in the same sense. A bit more earthbound than yeah. North. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the record's very space. I mean, it's like you're exploring space. That's what I like about it. It's like exploring space, and it's a sense that the the North, in a funny sort of way, was always about the future. And a lot of pioneers and innovators and inventors came from the North. So it's almost like a reimagining of the word North. Instead of it being flat cap, it's more yeah, you know computers yeah, yeah. and yeah. motorways and <laughs> Jodrell Bank. Yeah. You know. Yeah, definitely. I think like subconsciously, that was definitely one of our aims: was mm. to kind of give that like synthesis, synthetic. North, do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. I, just, I think that's pretty cool.